lung cancer is the largest killer of adult men and women worldwide. Many of the reasons for that is it's so late in its stage, oftentimes when it's diagnosed. Historical data from not that long ago, seven, eight years ago, 70% of lung cancers that were being diagnosed were at stage three, which makes it much more challenging to treat and cure someone of lung cancer. Through lung cancer screening, we've been able to identify patients much earlier in their stage, which gives them much more treatment options and much more hopeful chances of cure. So for that reason, screening is really important. Any patient with a significant smoking history and age over 55, um, and the way that we've redefined it is it used to be just 20 years of smoking. And now we've redefined it to say number of cigarettes per day times the number of years smoking. So even if you were smoking for only 10 years and not 20 years, but you were smoking twice as much, you might also be a candidate under the new screening guidelines for a CT. Um, what that would mean is that you would talk to your primary care provider and let them know that you'd be interested in a screening and you'd get a low dose CT scan. So less amount of radiation than a true thin slice CT, but enough of a screening capability to where any suspicious nodules ideally would be detected. One of the things that really excites me is that there's so much research and science happening, understanding the genetics of lung cancer, defining what mutations exist in lung cancer, and can we generate patient-specific, individualized, custom treatments for those patients? Whether it's given IV, whether it's given through the robotic bronchoscope, our understanding of how a patient gets lung cancer and how we can treat it to where it's not the number one cancer killer worldwide, uh, I, I think we're gonna make a lot of movement there in the next 10 to 20 years. And I think screening is a part of that so we can capture these patients early, understand what we're dealing with, but as we're capturing these patients, understanding how these tumors behave on a cellular, a molecular, and genetic level is also something that's really new and it's an area of very interesting science.